is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Are you all ready for this? Mm -hmm. This is a <laughs> sham. No, no. Nope. Just stop. Get real. Welcome, welcome to DBL. We've got the best panel on TV right here, minus Sam Shocker, who is excellent as well. Welcome. All right, we begin today, and I don't even want to start today because I'm trying to stall, but I have to get it at some point. We begin with the 146th mass shooting in America this year. This time it was at a bank in Louisville, Kentucky. Monday morning, five people are now dead after a 57-year-old mom of two died last night. Eight others were wounded, including this 26-year-old rookie officer who was just, get this, 10 days out of the academy when he was shot in the head. He underwent brain surgery, but is still listed in critical condition. As is our policy, we are not showing or naming the shooter. He's a 26-year-old former bank employee who reportedly opened fire with an AR-15 during a staff meeting. He was also killed. He also live streamed the shooting on Instagram. What was your reaction, guys, when you saw this? Uh, there was no red flags, apparently. What was your thought when you saw this, Al? Uh, just w personally, I know exactly where that bank is. I know Louisville like the back of my hand. When I did MTV Made, I spent an entire summer there. I performed there uh, probably three dozen times. I know people there, so I thought about how closely knit that community is and how it must have just destroyed just a fabric of uh, Louisville's a different kind of place. It's a different kind of place. And it, I, I, I guess at this point, I don't know what to say. We're going to go into their background, and this person is mad about being fired, and the other person is a, a white supremacist, and the other person is, 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 a, is a disgruntled. It doesn't matter the reason. Every, we're talking about 25 and 26 year olds. Families are shattered, Erica, forever forever and the fact that somebody that's just now fired can just go get an ar-15 oh, okay did they have weapons like that even in like world war one I, I i i don't know i it's just what are we going to do about this guys because it seems like we could just take the day off and just kind of run the same so story sad as that is erica i don't know i don't know where we go and I, it looks like the decisions to stay the course which is to just do the story every two or three days yeah, I don't know how to have this same conversation any differently. I know, I know. I just look at it the, how from our, the lens of how we've reported this or talked about these stories for the past six years. And we've talked about this before. It's very different than our first couple of seasons. Yeah. Mm. You know, um, it, and I think about it in terms of how we have all apparently decided to become conditioned in order to deal with these stories because when we talk about gun control, when we talk about mental health, when we talk about safety and security in our country, everything is so politicized as if everyone's not bleeding red. Hmm as if the bloodshed isn't the same, as if people's lives and families being dismantled don't have the same type of impact. Yeah. Um, this is such a strange conversation because there's no way to other, because it literally affects everyone. We are all in the crosshairs, um, potentially at any time. And it doesn't seem alarming enough for our leadership and our government to do anything about it. So here we are. And um, here we'll be. Yeah, and I, first of all, thank you for saying that. I do sense a type of numbness between all of us. Let's just be honest. We've reported over and over again, there's more shootings than we have days, right? How, are you numb as well? Because I, I, I am, I am. I feel bad about saying that, but it's like, how many more different ways can we discuss we have a I problem? I think being numb is a, is a, pro, uh, like a protection mechanism right. that we're using. Because Jeff, I still remember the Thousand Oaks shooting. I still remember hearing that dad's wail at that press conference, and it's been in my brain. And I think about it at least once a week, yeah. ever since that. So you're, talk to me. But yeah, I, I think we say we're numb, but I, I want to know where you're at. I would say put frustrated on the list for me, too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, first of all, hats off to those police officers. They were there in three minutes, okay? It's like, that's our line defense now. Amen. But half the country wants to say blank the police, 
and they're our only line of defense. I don't care what your stance is, where you're coming from, what this guy's background is. Obviously, it's for notoriety of some sort, right? And this is where the frustrating part comes in. We're not doing anything to do anything to prevent anything. It, it, let's fight about the guns. Let's fight about the police. Let's fight about the person's background. Let's fight about if they're trans. Let's fight about if they're white. Let's fight. Let's start looking at the problem. We're so divided in what is happening, and we have the same conversation time in and time out. Okay, this person was looking for notoriety. I don't care who they are. I didn't want to hear about the last shooter who they are, but they're live doing it on their Instagram, right? That's notoriety. Mm -hmm. They want people to know what their pain is, what they went through. I don't want to know. I want, I want to start putting people in jail. Who else knew about this? You're going to be culpable now. When your kid's walking around with kittens in his backpack, you're going to be culpable. When your kid's texting you saying he had a problem with your gun, you're going to be culpable. You've got to start holding people responsible. Make the penalty harsher. Luckily, again, this person is dead. Mm -hmm. Okay? We keep saying that because of the heroes that we have on our street. That kid put that picture up again. He's fighting for his life in the hospital 10 days out of the academy. It's like we're sending our kids to Vietnam all over again. They're storming the beaches of Normandy in our own country. Apps, well said. Yeah. Well, well, I was just going to say, but it's here. Speaking of what you're saying, who else is culpable? Let's move to this. We have an update on that six-year-old, you all remember this, who shot his teacher. This happened back in January at a school in Virginia. Now, the teacher, remember her name. She's 25-year-old Abigail Zwerner. She was shot through the hand and the chest. The boy's mother was indicted yesterday. This is why I was speaking about what Jeff was saying and is now facing charges of felony child neglect and a misdemeanor count of recklessly leaving a loaded firearm so as to endanger a child. What do we think about this? Al, I remember specifically you saying charge the mother, charge the mother. Will this be something, a baby step, a tiptoe? I think this could possibly be Obviously, it's a slippery slope because you start going, well, it's hard to tell what people knew. But we now know that we've covered a couple stories now where they're, they're definitely, the parents go, yeah, he was being really weird and stockpiling guns and he was writing weird things on Facebook and I was texting him, you better not buy another gun. Why are you texting that to your 20-year-old that's had mental health problems probably since they were five or six years old? There has to be, and I always give the analogy, if I have a, a, a Rottweiler, and it gets off the leash of my yard and it tears up a three-year-old, I'm responsible mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. Well, your Rottweiler just killed 10 people or five people. So we, what is what is this? We've had the same conversation. I mean, the same conversation could be had about Parkland, um, Uvalde. Columbine? Columbine. All the way back the, uh, to Columbine. The original, so yeah, is this a, a mother being arrested going to change anything? Likely not in the beginning until those arrests are a little bit more far reaching mm. and where everybody feels the heat underneath them mm -hmm. because not everyone is going to understand or uh, empathize with this mother. But I bet you in all of these different examples that we gave, there's somebody that you're like, oh, now that could have been me. And ultimately, that's how empathy is born anyway for most of it's, us. It's prevention. It's prevention and accountability. We need more of it. I don't know if that's the answer, but nobody else is doing anything. I'm throwing ideas on the table and people just want to shoot them down and call me a hypocrite or I this or that. So. It's like everyone just wants to attack everybody instead of put ideas on the table and find a solution. Or cross an aisle. Pe cross an people aisle. say it doesn't matter. Jail is a deterrent. Yeah, Jail I agree. is a deterrent. I think this will go more widespread and I hope there's more culpability, but at some point uh, we got an epidemic on our hands. We'll be right back. Somebody roll the clip. Let's make sure we have Jeff's sex tape. Wow, things are getting spicy here. At <laughs> Cold hearted snake. Look into his eyes. Let's that roll that again, right. everybody. <laughs> So just so you guys know, Yolanda, thank you for writing and said, who leaves a gun loaded or laying around? This six-year-old um, found the gun. There was apparently and allegedly a trigger lock for the gun, meaning, I don't know if you guys know, but sometimes there's a fingerprint and it has to match the same fingerprint or you have to get into it. Sorry. But the six-year-old um, had been in such trouble, remember, that every day they had to be accompanied by a guardian. Well, this was the one day they weren't. And remember the teacher, Abigail Werner. Remember that name, because she's she going to be a historic the figure. She told the school that day he's got a gun. Three other people did too. They said it's in his pockets. And what did they say, Al? He is 
those are he's little. He's got little pockets. He's got he can't little have a gun. pockets. I mean, he it, can't have a gun. It, it's a. It's the thing. little pockets. It's uh, Thank you, you, you know, Jeff kind of said it, but it's just like we have to start looking at all our options and catch. It's, it's no different than if three or four year buddies got drunk in your garage and were talking about doing a crime, and you would be like, "Hey, I don't want anything to do right, with this. Right, right, right. I'm not involved right. because you don't want to get looped in with that. So even if there's a small possibility that somebody will lose their freedom for something that they didn't do. There is a deterrent. That, it's Actually, a deterrent. Yeah. That's why people go. Thanks, and they'll go to trial. I'm not saying yeah. throw them in jail right, right away. They'll right. go to trial and be like, hey, this was a mistake. You know, use whatever it is. But we need something to say, like, for people when they just flash for a second and say, well, that's a little odd. My kid's leaving with a backpack that's a little filled up more than usual. Well, we'll just let him go. This time you say, well, I might go to jail, exactly. so let's stop him That's and right. maybe prevent something. That's right. Anything, That's anything. Right. That's why you, know? you don't want people driving their, your car when they're doing uh, committing yeah. a crime, because it's still on you. So it's like, unfortunately, I think it's Welcome back. So we have an update on a story y'all talked about last week when I was in here, and I can't wait to discuss this with you. If you recall, Bud Light came under fire after it partnered with a transgender TikTok star to promote its beer. Kid Rock showed his anger over this whole thing by shooting up cases of the beer. More recently, country music singer John Rich said he pulled cases of Bud Light from his Nashville bar as part of the boycott. Other bar owners across the Midwest and South are saying customers are revolting. So what was Bud Light thinking? Because they've been rather silent about it, right? Here's what Bud Light's VP of Marketing said about the brand and her decision to court new drinkers. Take a look at this. This brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. Bud Light had been kind of a brand of fratty, kind of out of touch humor, and it was really important <laughs> that we had another approach. So DBL Nation, we wanna hear from you. Will this hurt Bud Light's brand or not? Your turn to vote. Go to dblvote.com to weigh in. Real quick, Jeff Fitter, owner of Case and Bucks, a restaurant in Missouri, said, quote, in Bud Light's effort to be inclusive, they, ex they excluded almost everybody else, including their traditional audience. You know, there's a saying that if you don't bend, you'll break. And I think a lot of companies have found themselves in this very interesting conundrum where you have a uh, historical, traditional demographic that has supported you the entire time. And now you've realized that what they haven't realized is they're declining as well. Right. You know, like their, de their reach and how important they are to the bottom line of the brand is on a de decline. We're not talking about what's happening today. We're talking about what's gonna happen in 10 years. So I think you're gonna see a lot of companies as we've seen evolve more. But my other thing about this is, I really think that we need to be very clear about what oppression looks like because some people feel incredibly up, like they are really trying so hard to be oppressed. Yeah. And I don't understand it. Right. Like I really don't. It was one post and even if it was a campaign, it was a post targeted to a different part of the demographic. I'm sure a lot of these people would be quite shocked to know that everyone who has enjoyed a Bud Light or has had Bud Light in their past doesn't look like them and doesn't even have the same type of background. So this is just another demographic that a brand is going after and okay but is it too woke of a of a, of a demographic i'm not I'm no, agreeing I, with you yeah. black people at recognizing black people was a woke thing to yeah, do not yeah. that long ago that's okay true. that's true more than two black people on a panel was like a big was thing. a super woke thing to do i still don't like so <laughs> let's be i mean yeah. honestly yeah jeff it's, it's, totally it, fair. it's so weird we're in this world now where we're putting the word inclusivity and it's like we are in a capitalistic country. They're not being inclusive. They're trying to sell beer to as many people as possible. That's harder to do. Back in the day when everybody would, was watching television, 
the, you know, different strokes. Dukes of Hazard got 30 million viewers a, a night. Those people are all online. You have to find them here and here and on their smartwatch. And that's where you have to get people in TikTok. And the old school drinkers don't seem to understand it. Why did it go from just business to just strictly feelings now? Mm. Yeah, look, I was on her side last time we did this. Yeah. I understand one off posts. I understand uh, you get these boxes or you whatever it, it is. You I understand it. marketing. We have 10 seconds left. I was going to take the other side. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Ten seconds left. Yeah, I was going to give you a little argument from the other side. We don't have enough it's time. It's pre appreciated. But Stephen Childer says, congratulations to Bud Light, millions and millions in free advertising. It's very true. We're all talking about it. But is it I mean, good? Oh, never mind. That's sorry, a good point. Sorry, sorry. Uh, let's see the poll. 56% says it will not. 44% says it will hurt uh, Bud Light's brand. Coming up on DBL, our interview with actor Jim Belushi. He's telling us all about his cannabis business and season three of his show, Growing Belushi. It's a great interview. Stick around. Okay, be honest. Have you done your spring cleaning yet? Well, according to an American Cleaning Institute study in 2022, nearly 78% of Americans did at least one spring cleaning last year. Well, a nice clean space makes us usually feel good. Does it really benefit our mental health? To get the facts, we went to Dr. Don Potter, a psychologist with the Cleveland Clinic, a study in the National Library of Medicine, and a study from the Princeton University Neuroscience Institute. Spring cleaning can be beneficial for a number of different reasons. In general, cleaning can restore a sense of control. A 2010 study in the National Library of Medicine shows people who described their homes as cluttered or full of unfinished projects were more likely to suffer from depression than those who described their homes as restful and restorative. It can also be beneficial because a lot of people find clutter distracting, so engaging in some spring cleaning can um, help you kind of refocus on your other goals. Princeton University compared the impact of living in clutter versus organized spaces and found people living in cluttered spaces had too many visual stimuli, like shoes on staircases, dishes in the sink, and wrinkled clothes. The overload they found caused more stress. Dr. Potter says the best thing to do to get a good start, write down a list of things you need to tackle and cross it off as you go. If cleaning feels overwhelming, you can set a timer for 20 minutes and tackle just one cleaning task during that time. You can also listen to a podcast or music to feel more energized while cleaning. With your Verify Fact Check, I'm Megan Bragg. fields of Oregon lives a legend with a plan for world domination. He is Jim Belushi. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome back. Jim Belushi is back showing his life as a cannabis farmer on the series Growing Belushi. And earlier we spoke with him about how he got his green thumb and the possibility of a new Blues Brothers project. Take a look. The new season of Growing Belushi, it's airing now, and I wanted to know how this season is different, and what are some parts that you're so excited about, or most excited about? Oh, well, I'm excited because uh, it's funny. Yeah. I mean, the show is really funny. My cousin and I have a great chemistry, and it's always hard to find chemistry in television. Yeah. And we, we found it. Uh, I'm also excited about spreading the word of confidence in cannabis on how, you know, there's great medical properties involved with it. And we, we go into 13 states and three countries, so it's we're all over the place. It's Fantastic. really fun. Fantastic. Well, we love watching the journey, but we want to know, what's a typical day in your life on the farm? Like, does a rooster <laughs> wake you up? A rooster? The rooster wakes me up, the dog gets me out of bed, <laughs> and then we're chasing uh, rabbits, you know, deer, aphids, uh, mites, mice, ground squirrels. I mean, we're trying to keep all these little animals off these precious little plants. So it's, you know, I feel like a cross between Bill Murray and Elmer Fudd, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know I, uh, we, we grow some great stuff, and all the animals and all the bugs in the area go, hey, Belushi's got some gas. Yeah, they want some, too. There. Yeah, they yeah, do. Why can't they have a little something-something? Maybe they need it, too. Well, I <laughs> I don't mind giving them a little bit of a side <laughs> in a bowl. 
<laughs> but leave the stalks of my plants yeah. alone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. It seems like everything's going great, but more importantly, it seems like you're just having fun, Jim. It's what's the most important in life. But we heard Dan Aykroyd actually gave you the idea to start this business. Is that true? And how did that happen? Well, you know, I, I had this beautiful property along the Rogue River in, in Oregon, and the farm behind me came up for sale, and I bought it, but I didn't know what to do with it. And Danny goes, uh, Jimmy, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> cannabis is legal in the state of Oregon. It's the new agriculture. Why don't you just grow cannabis? And he put wow. me in touch with a guy named Captain Jack, who we knew in the 70s. And I brought him on a farm, and it just started growing, and it just progressed. Now we're in, like, 12 different states. Wow. We're, we're going international. It's become quite a, an entrepreneurial uh, That's venture. And it's all documented on the show. That's fantastic. All right, speaking of Dan, he's come to you with a bunch of new ideas for Blues Brother movie, right? But it, you've said it's probably not going to happen. So if you were both to make a reboot, who would you dream cast as the brothers? Oh, oh, no. It, 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 ain't, go, it ain't gonna happen. It's not happening. <laughs> it, it, it's not gonna happen. It's, it, it's, there's no reboot going on. Amen. Amen. I love now, it. Now, there may be a Broadway show. Oh. So who would you and cast in that? Cool. That's then we good. do have to consider who would take uh, Danny's place and mine or John's place, yes. Who, yeah. who pops in your head right away? Maybe we can make it Blue Sisters and do <gasps> Reese Witherspoon and Taylor Swift. Uh, Very oh cool. my gosh. Go. Okay. It's a and great answer. Yeah, it yeah. Was. Thank you so much. You're definitely one of our dopest interviews. Oh, no. <laughs> well, thank you. We're, we're on Wednesday night on Discovery, so uh, give it a shot. I know. Let me just repeat that so all of our viewers can, can also uh, set their DVRs. So check out the new season of Growing Belushi Wednesdays on Discovery. Thank you so much, Jim. We'll be right thank back. You. Thank you. Thank you. Always and great. Hold of, uh, Taylor, like, you know. Yeah, I'll call her. Up. I'm yeah, on I'm it. Free. I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> A bill in Congress called the Restrict Act has made headlines over claims that it could result in the ban of the popular social media app, TikTok. But some people online say the legislation could have a broader impact. Using VPNs to bypass banned apps such as TikTok is made a criminal act under this bill. So what is a VPN? And can the Restrict Act be used to make it illegal to use one to access restricted apps and websites? Let's verify. Our sources are the Restrict Act, Rachel Cohen, Communications Director for U.S. Senator Mark Warner, Wilmari Escoto, U.S. Policy Analyst for the nonprofit Access Now, and the Electronic Frontier Foundation, a nonprofit focused on defending civil liberties in the digital world. This claim needs context. Virtual private networks create a private encrypted connection for you to browse the internet. People use them for all sorts of things, like connecting to internal company networks, watching streaming services in other countries, and yes, accessing restricted websites or apps. The Restrict Act would give the U.S. government authority to ban a wide range of communications and technology products that are deemed a risk to national security. But it doesn't explicitly ban VPNs or impose criminal penalties on people who use them. In fact, the bill's language never includes the words virtual private network or VPN. According to Rachel Cohen, a spokesperson for Senator Mark Warner who introduced the Restrict Act, the legislation is aimed at companies that create a systemic risk to the United States national security, not at individual users of apps like TikTok or VPNs. She says that the bill, if passed, targets people or companies who try to sabotage American communications technologies to a degree that creates catastrophic effects on U.S. critical infrastructure, like interfering with a federal election. So why does this need context? Well, some experts say the bill's language leaves room for doubt about the people and types of technologies it would impact. U.S. policy analyst Wilmari Escoto says the bill is, quote, drafted broadly enough to raise concerns that using a VPN to access TikTok or other services restricted in the U.S. under the act could result in severe consequences. And experts with the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which has voiced opposition to the bill, said it can be read as criminalizing common practices like using a VPN to get a prohibited app. Penalties for violating the act include monetary fines and up to 20 years in prison. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. Airline passengers could be in for a rougher ride, all because of climate change. Let's connect the dots. Clear air turbulence happens in the absence of clouds or bad weather. It's caused by wind shear, that sudden changes in wind speed and direction. Experts say the jet stream is experiencing more wind shear as global temperatures increase. 
It's up 15% in the last 40 years and could triple in the next 40. Broad areas of turbulence can be forecast by meteorologists, but specific localized areas of clear air turbulence are challenging for pilots. One way to limit that bumpy ride, fly around the turbulence. But that means longer flights and more expensive tickets. And there are big consequences. Flight attendants experience the most injuries. New data shows that since 2009, over 160 people have had serious injuries from turbulence. That includes broken bones, burns, and internal bleeding. Now, the government is looking at new rules to help protect flight crews amid a dangerous trend. And that is Connecting the Dots. Welcome back. We got some great deals on amazing products from our friends at Morning Save. Check it out. Steph, what do you have for us today? Hey, Tori, and hi, DBL Nation. I am super excited to show you the deals today, and as ever, they are absolutely fabulous. Check out this. Tori, I know you love your garden. <gasps> this is perfect for you. It's the eight pack solar color changing pathway lights. Oh my gosh. So this deal includes eight pathway lights that display a beautiful pattern on the ground. Now, normally these are $70. Oh no. But we've got this pack for $29.99. Oh, yes. So that's saving up to 57%. Check out this as well. This is the three pack super bright zoomable Cree LED tactical flashlights. Whoa. So this deal includes three flashlights Flashlights that are powerful, compact, and durable. Normally they're $20 each, okay. but we've got a three pack for $12, so that's saving everyone 80%. Now check out this. This Ooh. is the Tac Life S10 Pro Robotic Vacuum Cleaner with a mop, what? Wi Fi, what? and LiDAR navigation. So this deal includes one black robotic vacuum cleaner, and this is amazing because you can get two chores done with one smart product. It can vacuum multiple surfaces and even mop hard floors. What? Normally, it's $300, but we've got it for $99.99, so that's saving up to 67%. Our last product is the two-pack ODEC USB-C power banks. So this deal includes two portable chargers, one USB-C charging cable, and one micro USB charging cable. Normally, this is $60, but we've got two for $14.99, which is saving up to 75%. Ooh, shopping. Head on over to morningsave.com to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices or you can even scan that QR code on screen. It's going to take you directly to these products on Morning Saves website. Steph, as always, thank you so, so much. Guess who bought the solar lights up the pathway? Did you really? Oh, I yay. sure did. They can change colors. And I'm having a peony party for all of us when my peonies bloom, all pink. Oh, all right. huh? we only have like a two-week window. I right? have one week. Yeah, okay. that's it. Bye, guys. <laughs>